this one, we're now going to start doing animation. And if look at the model, okay, it should have all been skinned by now. Everything should be skinned and correct. Um, if you want to, before you dive into doing an animation, um, and I do kind of recommend it, at least to see or make sure that everything's going okay. If we go to our layers, all right, so you can delete any layers that you already have from where you've been, you know, getting your influence, checking it. Um, so he's, he goes back to his default position. Um, if we go down here, hold down where we normally click to create a new layer, but go down instead to this one, this little man here. This will create cat's default walk cycle. It's absolutely awful. It's, you know, you definitely don't use it. But it will give you a good idea of if your influence is uh, correct or not. So I don't know if this is going to lag or not it might do but we'll we'll give it a go okay so you can kind of see it, it looks silly but everything looks correct on my model you know it's a shame that it's lagging though no matter it won't lag on yours hopefully um so yeah it, it works check that it works it's all good uh we can delete that now okay but we are going to create and abs one, so default animation there. Um, what I kind of like is that the, the more I use Cat, the more and more I realise for games it's a super duper system for animation um, because obviously everything stays static. You create numerous animations with different poses and different things like that. And this layer system is absolutely brilliant. You know, it definitely pips. Uh, yeah, I know it may has a similar thing, but I just think that this is so much easier, so much user friendly, which is strange, because you know, um, I've always thought Maya's your yeah, animation uh, systems were far more friendlier, but this is this is great. Um, so hopefully we should be able to produce some very good animations. Uh, unfortunately, this one today isn't going to be brilliant because I want to keep this video short. However, it will demonstrate. The basics for you know moving and uh, creating an animation. Um, the first thing I'm going to introduce you to is this timeline down here. Okay, so I don't know why that's there. That shouldn't be there. Um, I'm just going to delete that. In fact, let me just run a little test. Create that again. No, it shouldn't have been there. Hmm. Okay. Forget about that one. Let's <laughs> let's continue. Uh, so we're going to just press play here, right? So that puts us into animation mode. I think it's kind of good practice to label your your animation there because you could have quite a few of these. Um, I'm going to name this one "Hello" because the animation I'm going to do is going to be a "Hello" animation. Okay. Now, this is your timeline. It's still a little bit lagging for some reason. Just a little bit. It's just kind of irritating. Anyway, I'm going to turn off that. That should help it. Yeah, there we go. Woo! Right. <laughs> okay. So, this is your timeline. This is where all your keyframes are going to go for your animation. Um, I have 600 frames. By default, yours probably says 100. 600 frames is the amount that you have to do for uh, this animation unit. So, to change that from 100 to 600, you go down to here, time configuration, and you change this number from 100 to 600. Press OK, and it will change it to this length. Um, it's also kind of worth pointing out that you can change it from frames as well to minutes and seconds by changing it to that. So you can see 20 seconds. And that will update in here. It hasn't yet, but it will. There we go. Snap. Done. So you can change it to seconds if you wish. Um, in fact, I prefer it in seconds. You get a much better idea of timing, um, you know. But uh, principally, obviously, it is still frames. Um, I'm going to pop it back to frames. So in some ways, you get a nice snap. Um, but yeah. Anywho, getting back to it. To animate, I'm going to 
just make the hand wave. So the first thing you have to do, the absolute first thing, is create a keyframe for every single bone. So select them all, deselect the body, and we're going to create a keyframe. To do that, we press set key. Okay. Now what's also crucial is that this is pressed, set key mode. Right? That is super important. Without that, it won't work. Um, we're going to move this along to about 60. Now, set key is the manual way of doing it, um, but also the very awkward way of doing it. So I'm going to demonstrate both set key and auto key. So set key, let's say for instance if I move this hand up here and you know I go, go like that. Let's move it in. Okay, like that. So ooh horribly bent that arm. It's deformed. There we go. I don't think anyone's arm should ever do that. <laughs> All right. Okay, so got the hand out straight like that. But if I press set key now, right, notice that it's done the hand movement, but it hasn't actually moved the arm, which is really irritating. You know, it, especially if you put a lot of time into it, and then you realize, oh, hold on, it hasn't moved everything. So <laughs> we'll delete that. So drag select, delete key, and just press delete on the keyboard, and now it's gone. And it will just jump back to the first key. Instead, let's use auto key. So turn off set key and click auto key. Okay, and you know it's activated because everything goes red. Move it to 60. This time, with auto key, we'll move it into place. Hmm. A bit far out, that's why. I don't want that arm up so much. So I'm going to rotate that down. Okay. Right. Okay. So there it is in position. Oh, I can actually see an error there. Ooh, that's not very nice. I'll have to fix that. I'm not going to worry about that for now. But I will fix it. But if we move it now, you'll notice let me turn wireframe off so it doesn't lag. But notice it moves all of the bones into position. So if I, for instance, then go like that to wave the hand, make a little movement, and back that way. And of course, I could move it back again to do a double take on it. There we go. The Zeke is now doing a wave. So, I'll tell you what I'll do. So, I can. Let's take it so it's unrealistic, but I'll turn I'll turn my textures off because that's probably partially what's slowing it down. Uh, views, show materials without maps. There we go. So that should be better now. Yeah, there we go. Okay, and then what we could do is we could send it back to the original position if we wanted to. 
So you could take that keyframe, hold down shift, and then that will put it back. Now obviously notice that that didn't put it all the way back in its proper position right the way down there. That's because it's linked to these bones as well. So in actuality, in order for it to work, you have to clone, select all of them, and then do it. So like that. So let's put it back. There we go. So it's all a hierarchy. They're all linked together. So then you can go in, you can add little bits of movement in between. And let's say. There we go. So, you know, just experiment. That's the quickest way to create an animation. Um, you know, I think I'm going to give you quite a lot of time to to do this, to mess around with it. And obviously, you know, you'll be using this video outside. So practice as much as you can. And there we go. Hello. <laughs> It's terrible. Don't forget to move things like this, move things like the hand into a comfortable position. I mean, when you create your foot, before you create your first keyframe, always move your character into a different, different position. Something that looks more comfortable. Ah, that should be on the hand as well. Oh, I've missed a few things here. Okay, but yeah, make sure that it's in you know, position that looks sensible. Okay.